Welcome Panther fans to another edition of Panther Preview. I'm Harold Tillman alongside Lewis Sims. Coach, um, I guess this is going to be a, a end of the season wrap up, but before we wrap the season up, let's talk about Thursday night. All right, Thursday night we came out with a Hancock team, we came over from, from over the kill and um, I tell you what, they they were uh, they came ready to play, yeah. and um, we had a chance early, go up fourteen nothing on them. Had a couple of turnovers, uh, they were able to get it to fourteen to ten, and after that, it was just a, it was a it was a it was a cat fight. After that, we um, you know we would score, they would score, we would do some good things, they would do some good things. But fortunately for us, we had two uh, important defensive stands there in the fourth quarter. Uh, Force them to punt. We got the ball back. We go down. We score. Go up by two. Uh, go up by two. We get another stop. We're able to, to go down, score. We go up by by uh, by eight. Or no, we're up by one. We go up by eight. And so uh, now we have to kick off to them again. And uh, four downs later, our offense find them, uh, finds themselves with the ball. And we're able to uh, go into victory formation. They've used all their timeouts. And we were able to seal the victory with uh, taking a knee, which is probably the greatest play in high school football. But uh, we did it on a night to where we, we broke another record. You know, against St. Martin, we had 616 yards of offense. Um, against Hancock, we were able to put up 617 yards of offense. Okay, another yard. Uh, beat them by one yard. Um, and that was with uh, Keelan Parnell was able to throw for 181 yards on, on – uh, you know, 15 completions. Houston Johnson, of course, had 11 receptions for about 146 yards, 147 yards. Uh, just another phenomenal night. B.J. Barnes had a couple of catches. Brendan Grubbs had a couple of catches. And then also in the backfield, you had uh, Keelan, who had close to 160 yards on offense, uh, rushing the football, 107, I think 174 yards rushing. And then um, – you also had um, Cam DeFlanders, who who had over 100 yards rushing. And they were keying on him. Oh, yeah. The performance Absolutely. The and, and then Isaiah Bend had over 100 yards yeah. rushing with a, uh, with a touchdown as well. But Keelan had four TDs on the ground, two TDs in the air. And then we were able to um, – you know, um, Connor Young got his eighth goose in, almost scored, got about three yards. And then Tyrus Burton came in and scored his touchdown. Uh, you know, rumbled, stumbled, bumbled, and stumbled into the end zone. Yeah, good to see an good. offensive lineman was not going to be denied and, and was able to, uh, you know, put it in the end zone for us and seal that lead for us. And, and that was, uh, you know, uh, really, really, really um, just a team effort defensively. We had some people come around, really step up. Aiden also played well from the safety yeah. position. Uh, you had, you know, um, you know Jalen Parnell at linebacker got better each and every week, and uh, he had a really good game along with the guys up front. Of course, you can never say enough about, you know, Big John and he's going to uh, be hard to replace. And, and Jeffrey Rush and and uh, and, and uh, Joshua Battles, those three guys really played well up front along with Isaiah Marshall. So a really good job on the edges. Of course, Shank was Shank. Shank was played like he always does. G put together a great game on the other side of him, an outside linebacker. And, you know, and uh, our DBs, we, we gave up a few catches here and there. But, again, we were in position to make plays, and I thought we got better as the game progressed and made some really big plays down the down the stretch to uh, seal the win for us. Seemed like when it counted, that defense stepped up. I was, oh, yeah. I was proud of that. At first, it was like, well, wh where, where's the defense on either side of the ball? Right. But right. then I were stepped up, and um, that was the difference in the ball. Game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just proud of those guys. Well, now that takes care of the Hancock game, and, and unfortunately – you know, this is that was our last game. We didn't make the playoffs, but there's a lot of positive that happened this year. And you know, there might have been some negative, but overwhelmingly there was positive. It oh, didn't yeah. end the way we wanted. <clears throat> but I, I'm gonna tell you, oh, it did end two three, points. three wins in a row. I, I thought it well, ended yeah. like you know, once the reality. But you always, you always want to make the playoffs. <laughs> you do. Look, you do. you've got um, you know the Diaberville game decided by two points. Two we should have won that game. You had our opportunities. Harrison we had Central. opportunities. Harrison Same Central. Way. We had opportunities. Gulfport. We had opportunities. So again, one of those three wins. of the three of the three of the playoff teams um, that that we we were in the ball game had opportunities to win. So again, that that uh, I, I was talking to somebody and talking about the parity in the region and. and uh, you know, you look at the number two team, Iberville, beat us by two. The number th number uh, three team, Gulfport, we outscored them in the second half, 14 to 12, with the 14 year old quarterback. Yep. You know, who came in through for 188 yards, uh, mostly in that second half. Uh, third place or fourth place team, which is uh, Harrison Central, beat us by two points. So we come in at fifth. We came in fifth in the region, 
All right, so now you're looking down the, the other guys. Biloxi, we were in a, a just a, a knockdown drag out, came down to a big defensive stop to win 20 to 17. All right, seventh place team, St. Martin, came down to a big defensive stop to win that game, had to put up 600 yards of offense to stay ahead of them. So, you know, what what does that tell you about the, the parity? And then for a an eighth place Hancock team who was winless in the region, you know, but they, they took us down to the last quarter, last minute of the last quarter and had to get another big defensive stop. So there's a lot of parity in 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 region four six A. And other than you know, Ocean Springs, you know, kudos to them. They're doing a great job. They finished the season undefeated. And and that says uh, that just uh, says a lot about their program and wish them all the luck, uh, all four of those teams. I wish them the best of luck in the playoffs. And But uh, at the end of the day, I was really proud of the way we responded. We had a lot of young guys really step up. We had some older guys show tremendous leadership. When you're sitting at one and six, it's real easy to quit. It's real easy to, to, to you know, fold your tent and, and, and uh, take your ball and, and go home or to go in a shell and blame everybody in the world. Woe is me. But I, I kept telling Joe every practice, we don't practice like we're one and six. We don't practice like we're one and five. We don't practice like we're one and four. We don't practice like we're two and six. You know, we always had really good practices. Our guys really locked in and they enjoyed playing the game of football. And, and that's what I will always remember about this group. They were a group who uh, did several things that are historical, back-to-back 600-yard -back games. Never happened in Pascagoula history. Yeah. Um, you know, where, where they were they were the team that, that helped me, you know, get 100 wins as a head coach. Mm -hmm. They're a team that helped me uh, take over lead as a, as a winners coach in Pascagoula history, which says a lot about the coaching staff and the players and not a lot about me. I was just able to get on the bus and drive them wherever they went because we had a lot of good people do a lot of good things over the last 11 years. And, yeah. you know, the credit goes to the, those young men who established the legacy in 2011, 2012. I've got a picture over here. <clears throat> I'm going to step over here and get it. I keep it. It's from our first blackout game. Oh, I'll show this to you. The, these guys laid the foundation for uh, for what we became. And, and, and uh, these young men are are just uh, fine pillars of the community, do a lot of good things out there, and, and we wouldn't be where we are without these they guys. They were the seventh, uh, I tell you, they were. They, they really were, and you know, I'm walking around the camera and seeing all those kind of things, and I've got pictures up all over the office of guys that, that, that helped us be who we are, uh, help Panther Nation become what it is over the past 11 years, and I'm just so thankful that I've been able to be a part of this because it is a, a program that, that has uh, always been been one that has uh, competed at a very high level and you know, produced a lot of phenomenal athletes that have gone all over the nation and competed. We've had Super Bowl champions. We've had SEC champions. We've had people all over. We've had ACC, uh, you know, players of the players of the year, you know, up for player of the year. So we have all these guys that come through here and they all leave a little piece of them here in Pascagoula. And those little pieces come together to, to stitch together the fabric of our football community here. And just to be able to be a small part of that and to be able to say, you know what, this is this is a football community. This is a community that embraces their, their young men uh, through adversity, through, through, through winning and losing and through good times and bad. The community has their back and, and just to have that is incredible and in which Brings us back to what's next. What's yeah. next? And then, uh, you know, what's next is this. <clears throat> you no, know, right now we're doing exit interviews with our players. You know, we we'll um, so, you know meet with the seniors and set you know find out what they want, what they want to do, what they're going to do, what their plans are, and try to help them lead them down the path that they're going. You know, last night Houston Johnson uh, committed I to Jones uh, Community College. Uh, you know, kudos to him for that opportunity. And we'll have several others uh, that are going to have that opportunity come up shortly. Uh, can't wait to see that happen. But then you um, got guys coming back. Keelan Parnell got a chance to be the most prolific football player in the history of Pascagoula football because he's a starter from 9 through 12. Right. You know, he's going to have a chance to break all kinds of touchdown records and yardage records and, uh, you know, passing records and rushing records and touchdown records. In fact, he may have broken roosters already for all time uh, leader in touchdowns for a career. 
you know, so um, just phenomenal things coming back. You have Isaiah Ben, you know, a 1,100 plus yard rusher for the season, 11 touchdowns. You, you've got Cam DeFlanders who came in in the last half of the season and almost got a thousand yards rushing as well. Keelan, almost a thousand yards rushing. I mean, we got three guys that are almost a thousand yards rushing in the backfield. That doesn't even count. Houston, I mean, yeah, then yeah. Houston, Houston uh, on the outside. You had Houston and Nylon and Brennan and and B.J. Barnes. He'll be back for us. He'll be a two-year starter there at the outside receiver. Uh, you know, you got those guys. You got some younger guys that are coming in, like Corian Evans. Going to expect him to step up and do some great things. We have uh, Corbin Fryfogel. We got Jaden Webb. We've got Braden Smith, Jacoby and Davis. We've got all or Jacoby and May. We've got all these young guys on offense chomping at the bit. Jonathan Turner at running back, little JT, is going to uh, be able to come in and do some tremendous things for us. And on the offensive line, you're losing, you're losing Portwine and you're losing Tyrus Burton, who may be the best yeah. football player pound for pound I've ever coached. Don't leave out McCullough. And he didn't and, play uh, most of the year, but he right. had played for us the well, last year. Losing those two guys, McCullough, you know, Carter, God bless him, wasn't able to play after the first game, had, had some uh, injuries that, that kept him out. But he was Coach McCullough on the sideline yeah. and just watching him do that. Uh, I changed the senior night for him to say coach in there because I, I, I think he would be a good one. Uh, but then you've got some guys that stepped up and got a lot of experience. You had Tristan Fortenberry and Zach Cameron came in and got tremendous experience on the offensive line. Jeremy Floor, one of our leaders on the offensive line, is back. Uh, Jadarius Robbins, back, you know, at offensive line. So we got some some really core pieces of, of, of the puzzle there uh, that, that are really ready to move on and, and start preparing for next season. Defensively, <clears throat> linebacker core is intact. We lose Fred at some depth positions. But we have Ian, we have Jalen, and we have Tank coming back, an inside linebacker, an outside backer. We have G coming back along with Jaden Well. Nathan or Nicholas Davis is out there as well. So we've got three three guys coming back that can play out there. Up front, you got Isaiah Marshall, you got Jeffrey Rush, you got um you got uh, Joshua Battles. And then you've got several other young guys that are that are ready and chomping at the bit to get into that rotation. And they're going to get in the weight room and get a lot bigger, faster, and stronger and be able to do that. DB-wise, you have, you know, Christian Campbell's back at corner. You have uh, Marcel Parnell back at the other corner. So we're turning two corners. And then we have Jacordon Davis at safety. So you have three or four DBs coming back. So uh, unlike this year where we had zero or four coming back. So we have some guys that have some game experience. And it's going to be really um, – interesting to see how the off season plays out because you know in in the age that we live in a lot of people you know you set the bar high and you set your expectations really high sometimes people are willing to meet that expectation and sometimes they're not and they think they that their opportunities lie elsewhere and we hope that's not the case but we're not going to lower our standard we're going to keep pushing to be the very best program we can be and um, you know we got Silas coming back as a as a quarterback as a, as a as a sophomore next year. They got valuable experience. He's probably got more snaps under center and in the shotgun than any other freshman quarterback in the state of Mississippi this year. Uh, I mean he has had tremendous opportunity to get a lot of, of growth going into this next season. And just uh, there's so many things that that we're looking forward to. Uh, you know, Isaac Love at wide receiver. I mean, guy's got great hands. You know, we work on his speed and his strength, and he's going to be ready to step in and do some great things. Braden Davis at slot receiver, another freshman that you can't forget. So these guys, you know, we have uh, Joe Dirt and Hairball, uh, you know, uh, LeBlanc and LeBlanc and Ely. Those two guys are, are going to provide some depth somewhere as 10th graders next year. So I'm real excited about the future of Pascagoula football. I, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, another year in 6A, another opportunity to go out and compete and prove to everyone that, that, that we belong. Well, Coach, I guess that's that's going to bring um, this year's Panther preview to an end. I want to thank you for hey. for letting us come and, and bug you all year long. Hey. And um, and I've enjoyed it. I, ho I hope you have. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to thank uh, Frank Quarter for, for filming this each week and putting it on the air. Panther fans, always the hardest thing to do. But until next year, 